50% of all carriers, all insurers, see they need to spend at least 25% of their budget on underwriting technology and what sits underneath that. So you're the Director of Financial Services Technology Consulting at PwC. Now, um, as a consulting and advisory business uh, uh, with a good big f footprint in the insurance industry, uh, you will have a view of sort of overarching industry trends, and you write about them quite regularly. Give us a little sort of synopsis. What, what, what areas are you seeing the most interest and in investment in? Thanks, Robert. So I think one of the biggest things we're seeing at the moment is actually the kind of the understanding in the market of the need to drive technology transformation, and particularly for underwriting. So we and we look to kind of really understand that and dig into that more. So in 2022, we did a kind of underwriting transformation survey to see what was going on. And then this year, we've basically done a refresh of that to see that kind of change. And the biggest thing that stood out is that realization of the need to invest in underwriting technology. So a couple of the things that come out in that was things like 50% of all carriers, all insurers, see they need to spend at least 25% of their budget on underwriting technology and what sits underneath that. And that is absolutely key to how they move forward and how they work. And I think there's some really big drivers that are kind of that are making that realization happen. So one of those is just the needing to kind of push out risks that are not needed to focus on the growth. Also, the changing nature of risk they're dealing with. Alongside that, connectivity and demand from both customers and brokers to have a better experience of how they interact. And then lastly, and really, really importantly, that need to kind of attract and retain talent. Underwriting is such a key part of your business. And if you want the best underwriters working for you, you need to put the best tools in their hand. And I think that is what kind of drives um, what is needed and why that need for change and why that need for technology investment in this space. That presumably is the context for teaming up with Salesforce because the tech has the ability to help on across all those areas probably. Yeah, I mean massively so and I think this is where Salesforce has such a big advantage both kind of bringing that to the table as the technology. Firstly, it's the kind of ability to scale, have the flexibility and a lot of out-of-the-box functionality that's there and that helps kind of bring things together. I think what's, what's really, really important is an underwriting workbench is not just about a workflow. It's far more than that. It's about bringing together data from multiple sources, enabling brokers to interact with that, conduct analysis, and then move on to be able to actually then automate the workflow that sits beyond that. And that's a big part of what Salesforce do. I think secondly, and this is important as well, is that Salesforce is such a huge organization, spends a huge amount of money in kind of R&D, and technology is moving at such an incredible, space, incredible pace and we'll see that today when we talk about AI. If you implement an underwriting workbench for Salesforce, what you have is kind of the value of that investment, not just in the point of time that you go live, but then beyond that, because actually three times a year, the platform is being upgraded for you, and the newest and best technology from all that R&D is coming to you as an insurer. And that's a really big difference in terms of how you move forward and how you go. That's a bit of feedback that comes to us time and time again. Um, is this a report that's in the public domain, or are you going to keep it to yourselves? So, <laughs> it's not quite, and I might get in a little bit of trouble for bringing it up today, but um, it should be out in the next two weeks, and now that I've said this, it will be out in the next two weeks. So, um, yeah, as soon as it's available and published officially, then we'll make sure kind of InsureTech members get that and it gets published out. Great, thank you. Katie, back to you. You've made the compelling case for an underwriter workbench, and if I look at an underwriter workbench, I think it's partly uh, intelligent process, I think it's partly putting together all the data sources that an underwriter needs and presenting them in an intelligent way, and then, as James referred to, um, increasingly there's the possibility for automation or semi-automation of some parts of that process. Um, in, in, you know, tell, us, tell us about that. What are you automating? How do you automate? That? It's the automation piece I'm interested in understanding a bit more about. Yeah, so I think James has um, you know, commented on that a little bit around kind of three key areas of automation that we see in the underwriting workbench. Um, so the first bit um, which we see the automation sitting in is the actual um, submission ingestion. Um, so actually automating that ingestion. Because um, we know obviously a lot of the time that comes through email still um, or paper. So how do we automate that? How do we use... OCR capability to take the information and data out of that submission um, and also use natural language, natural language processing um, to pull that information and data out of that um, 
uh, out of that submission and actually get that into the system. Um, so that's the really first key area we're looking at automating, um, and we can actually do that today. Um, the second bit is, as James men mentioned, it's about the, the workflow um, and the automation of tasks and actions um, once that submissions come in. Um, so moving it along the life cycle as it goes through the different um, goes through the different processes, um, and we leverage that through one of our really powerful tools sitting across the platform, which we call Flow. Um, I always say it's, you know, you build once and use in many spaces. Um, so it's the ability to create a workflow, have Flow, automate that for you, um, and remove some of those mundane tasks, but also speed up um, that underwriting process. Because um, nobody likes to sit around, right, and wait and wait the kind of usual 48, 36 hours for um, that to be processed. Um, and then I think the last thing to touch on around the automation is um, automating um, the wealth of data that also needs to come in alongside that submission in order to give it the colour um, and the understanding that the underwriter needs in order to process that through. Um, so we have a really powerful tool with Data Cloud um, that can automate that um, data ingestion, break down those data silos, so bringing data from multiple different systems, be that data inside Salesforce that may be sitting in another org, to um, you know those really back-end old systems um, that are sitting on-prem, um, bringing all of that data together and automating it. Um, and like James um, rightly said, Underwriters are a scarce resource, right? They are in hot demand. And for those that you have in your business, you want to make their job as pleasurable as possible. Um, so for me, automation is one of the key ways of doing that. How do you work together, not you two personally, but generally the organizations? Um, who, so who does the selling? But more importantly, if somebody wants it. Are you, are you do all in, they, it's Salesforce stack, you do all the implementation. Give us an example of a sort of classic project? Yes, I, I mean, typically we will be a delivery partner alongside Salesforce. At times that will be, Salesforce will be in discussions with the customer, know how we do, know how we've worked, and bring us in to kind of join that conversation. Other times we will have relationships with different insurers, with brokers and everything else from all the work we do, and can see that opportunity and go, look, this is kind of the platform that you'd want and how you bring that forward. Um, and therefore we bring Salesforce into those conversations. And it's always about what is the right solution for the client ultimately, and that's where we kind of do that kind of joint discussion. And then when it comes into kind of implementation, that's when kind of we're working still with Salesforce. It's not like they go, right, here's the platform, off we go. We'll sit in the background, have no involvement going forward. They'll be part of that process. Um, but I think the other thing in terms of just how we do delivery is really important. So, I mean, in order to actually successfully deliver an underwriting workbench, which is not easy. We're not sitting here going, this is an easy transformation, an easy project to do. There's probably three key things that kind of sit behind that. The first is being able to understand the data, where it's going to come from and how you architect that. The second is how you can standardize your process. So how do you make sure that your process across business units is standardized enough that you can actually work that through? And the third is change and adoption. So actually making sure that once you're there and you've got the system, people are genuinely using it. Because without anyone using it, the system is pointless. It's just a big waste of money of everything you've done over the time. And the big thing we've kind of done as PwC in this space is actually invest in what we call kind of transformation accelerators. So that is where understanding kind of the process, understanding the market, bringing our kind of view of people who've worked on these kind of projects before and people who've come from the market as well. What we've done is we've built out kind of architectural frameworks kind of key designs, and then even a base configuration that brings to life what a workbench can look like. And I think that's really important, because what that means is kicking off a new program, what you don't have is kind of old school consultancy. We'll just bring some people, we'll start off, and we'll have a blank sheet of paper, stick it up on a whiteboard, and off we go, tell us what you want. This is brings to life what it could look like, and gives that kind of North Star vision, and that enables you to work that through. And then when it comes to building out kind of the data sources, we've already planned out a number of those integrations and giving you a kind of base way so you're doing a gap analysis rather than start from scratch. And I think that's really, really important, a really different way of working. And I think that's one of the things that Salesforce appreciate from kind of working with us in this space. You spent a long time talking about underwriters, but you've got to, you've got to focus on brokers too. What are you doing with the brokers? Yeah, so um, it's a really exciting space right now for us in terms of brokers. Um, so as James rightly pointed out earlier on, um, one of Salesforce's key values is innovation. Um, and with that, we have three releases a year. 
um, one of our biggest um, announcements for the insurance space at Dreamforce um, a couple of weeks ago was um, Brokerforce. Um, so that's our um, new product going to market focused on our brokers. Um, and with that, um, what, we're really trying to, what we're really trying to do is um, join together the front, middle and back office um, because we see space in that market where that's not being done today uh, with your traditional other systems. Um, so what we really want to do there is join together um, that front and middle office, um, a focus on bringing together that agency broker relationship, um, bringing down, bring, breaking down the data silos that are there. Um, I feel like I'm repeating records because I've said that about underwriting as well, but it is, it is true in this market, right? Um, they are there, they are, there are silos which are stopping a lot of people from doing a great job. Um, so we're wanting to do that with our broker solution. Um, but it's also around bringing together that back office, which I think at times is a forgotten space. Um, so that is definitely something that you will see um, us focusing on the next three releases around agency management, um, around um, the collaboration across that piece. Um, so yeah, it's a really exciting space, more to come. Um, we've actually got an, an event in November, uh, a voice of the broker breakfast that we're doing, uh, where we're bringing our product management team over to um, explore more on this space. Um, so yeah, it's a really key market for us for the next year. Um, talking of next year, James, um, as a pundit uh, consultant, 2025, what do you think? Got a prediction of sort of trend for us? There's probably two sides. Um, one is really about, I think, true digital connectivity. You see the investment that's coming in the underwriting space, and the same is happening in the broker space. The ability to capture risks, pass it through, and actually see that go through digital end to end. And that means that brokers, underwriters, right the way through, are spending their time doing value add rather than data getting input multiple times through the process, multiple inputs, multiple change. I think that is becoming a reality because these programs are going live and it will move into true execution. I think the other is you'll hear about it more today and continue to hear about it, but AI is changing the landscape. 2024 was kind of the year of POCs. I think 2025, AI gets released into the wild and gets genuinely kind of used. And that's firstly, how underwriters, how brokers, how everyone else is using it. I think the second is technology delivery. The ability for AI to really enhance and supercharge delivery will be really, really powerful going into this year. You have the last word. We're only just getting to know each other. Um, what's you, what's um, the one thing you'd like to leave the audience with, having spent all this money with us? Um, I think it harks back to what I wanted to get out of, the, out of this session, right? I want the audience to take away the fact that Salesforce is more than just a CRM. We are, we are a solution that can be utilized in this space for underwriting, for brokers, for your policy admin systems, as well as be that single source of data to, bring, to break down those data silos. Well, you did a pretty good job of it today. Katie James, thank you very much. Thank you, Robin. Thank you.